Greetings, everyone. Eh, I thought we'd mix up the angles a little bit. Well, it is update time again. I've got uh, a bunch of new stuff over the past month or so, and thought it was high time I did some update videos to, to get you guys all up to date on the updates. So let's do some updates. What are we going to start with? We've got a few things to go through. Uh, well, let's start with some sci-fi DVDs and a non-sci-fi Blu-ray that just want to throw it in there to get it updated. All right. <laughs> so without any further ado, new sci-fi stuff for the DVD collections. DVDs, not Blu-rays. Uh, well, one Blu-ray. Well, two Blu-rays. Anyway, update time. Sci-fi stuff today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Yeah, I realized I was wearing my Batman shirt, which isn't really sci-fi-y, so I put on my Doctor Who shirt. Alrighty, so let's, uh, let's check it out. Well, actually, I guess starting, we'll start with some Doctor Who, shall we? So first up, but most definitely not least, I picked up The Web of Fear, which was the uh, Lost for 45 Years and recently recovered story. Uh, you may recall a little while ago I picked up the uh, Enemy of the World when the Canadian exclusive release uh, came out. That has since got a wide release, um, but the wide release is no different than the Canadian release I got, so you know, no bother, no, no need to change that. Uh, so this was the one I was waiting for. This is a um, pretty notable six-part story. It features the first appearance of Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart before he's a Brigadier. He's actually a colonel in this. He hasn't been promoted to Brigadier yet. That happens in The Invasion, which is his second appearance a few stories down the line. But uh, and it's also the second appearance of the Yeti. Uh, this is the famous story. This is like one of the iconic stories of the 60s. Uh, this is where the Yeti actually invade the London Underground. And uh, really, really good stuff. Now, there's no extras on this. Um, same with the Enemy of the World. Basically, they just kind of rushed this out to get a... DVD release out. Now there was a lot of uh, speculation as to, there is one episode that was not recovered, so it's five of the six episodes that they have now. Previously they only had one, so that gives you some idea of what a big deal this is. Um, the single episode that they were not able to recover, they do have the complete audio soundtrack of, as they do for all the missing episodes, thanks to some industrious fans back in the day. So rather than do it in animation form, I guess because they just wanted to rush it out uh, as quickly as possible. It is the same uh, photo and clip based reconstruction that uh, was put out on the iTunes release when the episodes were first announced. So, that is it. So, Doctor Who, The Web of Fear, pick it up, check it out. You won't regret it. It's an awesome second Doctor story, lots of atmosphere, really creepy, and uh, one of the all time greats. Speaking of uh, more Doctor Who stuff, I also picked up. The Blu-ray Blu Blu release of An Adventure in Space and Time, which of course is the, uh, the um, I guess, docudrama, uh, basically tells the story of the creation of the show, features some wonderful performances by uh, David Bradley playing the role of William Hartnell, uh, Brian Cox as um, um, Sidney, God, why can't I remember his name? Bad Doctor Who fan, bad. Newman, Sidney Newman, ugh, bad, brain not working, brain broken today. Um, yeah, so anyway, this basically has all the extras that, again, were on the Canadian exclusive DVD release. This one I did upgrade because um, the Canadian version was only released on DVD. We did not get a Blu-ray release, but uh, and it was, of course, filmed in high definition, so I obviously wanted to get it in the best possible quality. Uh, new cover on this one, the Canadian DVD release, well, it's, well, hold on a second, it's buried back here, let me, my Doctor Who collection takes up two rows, but, uh, there we go. So the Canadian release, Canadian DVD release looked like that. Uh, this almost was the cover of the Blu-ray, but they had a vote on which cover people would prefer, and, uh, this is the one that won, so... 
so it does have all the extras from the Canadian DVD release, plus it uh, has some additional uh, stuff as well. Uh, most notably, it has a bonus DVD containing uh, the original, the very first Doctor Who story, An Unearthly Child. So you can actually see the actual story um, if you've never seen it before, if you're one of the three people who hasn't seen it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you basically get sort of a, a dramatized behind the scenes making of, and then you can see the actual story as well. Uh, but it also includes scene recreations with the cast from the movie and all kinds of cool stuff. So that's, uh, that's a great addition to the Doctor Who collection. Um, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. Um, it was everything that I hoped it would be and more. It was just fantastic. Uh, so big, big thumbs up to uh, Mark Gatiss and the gang for uh, bringing that our way. Now, next up, uh, carrying on at the 60th anniversary celebration of our favorite uh, radioactive lizard, I picked up Godzilla vs. Megalon on DVD. Now, some of you may be scratching your head saying, but Sean, I thought there was a Blu-ray release coming out. Yes, we have heard that there's a Blu-ray release coming out. We also heard that there was a Blu-ray release coming out a couple years ago when this DVD originally came out. Basically, if the Blu-ray release comes out, I will get it. I will upgrade it and I'll you know, give this away to somebody. But um, in case it doesn't, I didn't want to wait. I wanted to have this in my collection now because... This is the this is actually the Godzilla movie that I probably saw the most growing up. So it's it's significant to me personally, you know, my personal Godzilla history. So I wanted to have it in the collection. Um, there's no extras on this. It's not the, uh, the the first thing Skin Slip asked me was, did you get the, the version with the extras? No, I didn't. There's a few. Uh, there there was a handful of um, editions that went out that had extras on them, but they were not Toho approved, so it was re-released without extras. But the packaging wasn't changed, so there's no way to tell if you have the version with extras or not. Um, yeah, the new Blu-ray release will also not have extras. The same goes for Destroy All Monsters, actually, which which is definitely getting a re-release later this year. Um, the, it also was put out with, with extras uh, that were not approved, and Toho said, ah, ah, ah. So the re release is not going to have the extras on it. I don't know why Toho are such dicks about the extras. Like, seriously, what do you care? You're still making money, and it's not like they're dissing your film or anything. I, I don't know. I don't get it. They're just kind of sticklers about things like that. Next up, this was a TV show that uh, I saw back when it originally aired. I actually had no idea they'd done so many episodes. Um, classic science fiction author um, with tinges. Classic science fiction author with tinges of horror and uh, you know un uneasiness in his stories. We have all 65 episodes of the Ray Bradbury Theater, yes, courtesy of Echo Bridge. Now, one complaint I have about this set is, well, two complaints actually. First off, they're all stacked on a spindle. Yeah. Second off, it's a half hour show, 65 episodes, and they crammed them all onto five DVDs. Yeah, which basically means they did it evenly. So 13 episodes per DVD. Yeah, not too thrilled with that. However, the set was like $8. <laughs> so I can't really complain too much because it's 65 awesome half hours of television written by the maestro himself for eight freaking dollars. So we can't complain too much. But uh, but yeah, it's kind of, a, I don't know, kind of a Twilight Zone-esque series. Um, there's actually, it, it's kind of hit and miss as, as a lot of these, like it's an anthology series, but it's kind of hit and miss as a lot of these anthology shows are. Um, some of them are, re when it's really good, it's really good. When it's eh, it's really eh. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But, uh, but I always liked it. But, um, I remember seeing it when it first came on and there was an episode with, uh, uh, William Shatner where he was uh, tormented by a bully when he was a kid and, and basically traumatized by it, uh, about it as an adult uh, to the point where he wouldn't take his little boy to the local playground. Um, in fact, the story was called The Playground. And uh, it was just really creepy and uh, un unsettling and, and stuff like that. It has a really bizarre ending to it as well, which I will not spoil for you. But um, 
Yeah, anyway, uh, I had no idea that they had done so many episodes. I had only seen, like, the first four, I guess, when they originally aired back in the early 80s. And uh, it always stuck with me. Like, I always remembered it. And, like, in re-watching the episodes that I had seen back then, I was surprised by just how vividly I remembered them, actually, because I'm pretty sure I only saw them once back then, maybe twice. Um, I know I had, I think I had a couple of them on tape, and, uh, like, on VHS, and, and that was that. So, anyway, yeah, if you're looking for, you know, a nice addition to the anthology sci-fi horror collection, um, I would definitely recommend picking up the Ray Bradbury Theatre. It is dirt cheap. The quality is not the greatest on the set, obviously, because, you know, I mean, there's compression artifacts everywhere. Um, but, you know, in, in terms of the stories and the acting and just the, uh, the production value, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, I mean, it's, it's Ray Bradbury. Come on. He was one of the, one of the masters. All right, so next up, I picked up volume one of this a while ago. There's still one more volume to go. I need to uh, track that down. Uh, the third volume is actually only available as a show select title, but the second one was available through Amazon. Again, only for about ten bucks, uh, which is an insanely good price for any kind of Shout Factory set. Picked up volume two of Swamp Thing the series. So now I have the first two volumes. So this is uh, seasons one and two. And this is the first half of the epic length season three. So there we go. So now I just had to pick up uh, volume three and I'll have the whole series and I can sit down and, and marathon it good and proper. Yeah, so as I say, the third volume was only released as a shout select title. So you can get, can you even see that? No, you can't. <laughs> I put it down there and you couldn't see it. Well, we'll put it up here. There we go. Okay, sorry. I thought you could see that shelf down there. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, some more episodes of Swamp Thing. I'm not sure how many are on here. It's, uh, 26. So there's 26 episodes on there. They did 72 episodes total, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, so pretty cool stuff. So I will pick up Volume 3, uh, soonish and, um, and complete that collection, because, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. I never actually got to see the Swamp Thing series when it was on TV, because it was just never shown in my area, so... What can you do? All right, finally, we got one Blu-ray here, a non-high def, non-high def. Uh, well, what would be the point of getting it on Blu-ray then? Uh, a non-sci-fi Blu-ray. I don't know why I said high def, but uh, yeah, non-sci-fi Blu-ray. Um, I used to have this on DVD. I originally bought the DVD because I was playing a, a PS2 game called Freedom Fighters, and Freedom Fighters was basically about, um, it was kind of a squad-based thing where you would you would lead a, a team. Um, I talked about it a while back in, in another video, one of my PS2 overview videos. Um, but I really liked the game a lot, and everybody was telling me, oh, well, if you liked that if you like that game, you should check out this movie. And I'd heard of the movie, like, you know, back when it was new, but I never saw it. I'm, of course, talking about Red Dawn, the original with Patrick Swayze. Um, so I picked up the DVD of the movie a while back and really enjoyed it. And since uh, sold it, of course, knowing that the Blu-ray was coming out, and uh, picked up the Blu-ray recently from, from Walmart for five bucks. Can't go wrong there. You know, and I understand. I haven't watched it yet, but I, I've heard that it's actually a pretty decent transfer and stuff. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. There we go. Alrighty, so a bunch of new sci-fi stuff and Red Dawn. Can't go wrong there. That is it for this uh, update. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time for another update of something else. Until then, thanks for watching, and sayonara. Alright. Alrighty. Excellent. Ah, <laughs> uh, there, I guess. Action movies. Going to bring you in action movies. Yeah, and I'm going to come back. And. Squeeze that in there. There we go. Alright. We'll put this 
this with monsters over there, which you can't see, and put this with uh, Godzilla. Yeah. Oh, put it where you are. Yeah. Oh God, I'm running out of. I don't have any space. Great. Well, we'll just put it there like that, I guess. All right. Good. <clears throat> Next, just a short one, I think.